the next section of the book we'll be reading is uh, chapters 9 through 18. Uh, we're going to read uh, 9, 10, 11, and 12 in this section. And the vocab and reading comprehension questions that go with this. Uh, there was a few questions on the packet. Vocab, what do we do? Define each word. Look it up in a dictionary, whether you use a book dictionary at home or a online dictionary, use your Chromebook. Define the word, write it down, two pages of that, and then you're reading comprehension questions. So there's eight of those. So vocabulary words, stampede, bonkers, smirked, perky, peered, scowled, donate, blabbered, disgrace, routine, pry, erosion, Hazardous, snooty, devour, poacher, sagged, and snatched. So, if you look those up in a dictionary, you write your definition down. Uh, most of you that were here this week got this packet for next week. Um, I know some of you are out of school um, or full distance learners. You would need to pick this up in the office at school. Mom or dad, somebody that can come to school, pick this up. Um, then you'll have the packet. So this will be due uh, after Thanksgiving. So uh, it'll be November 30th. The week of November 30th is when this will be due. It's a longer section, um, and we have a short week next week or two weeks from now. Thanksgiving week is only two days. So um, and you'll spend a little bit less time with the full distance learning, um, where you only have English class twice a week now. So. Um, that's why you, you'll get a little bit more time to complete the packet, but I only got one packet so far for chapters one through eight, So, and it doesn't have a name on it, whatever that was. So we're going to read chapters 9, 10, 11, and 12. Chapter 9 begins on 33, I believe. 30, I lied. 30, page 31, chapter 9. Now, September 8th. Today was the first day of school, 7th grade. The bell wasn't going to ring for another 15 minutes, but everybody was already there. Partly, it's first day of excitement, but mostly it's checking everybody out, seeing what they look like after the summer. Almost everybody looks different. Changed at least a little bit. And not just that, not just different, but different, better like tan from swimming pools and beaches and all, like brown hair, not blonde, like taller, but a lot of it's clothes. I'd say one quarter is checking out other kids' clothes, and three quarters is showing off your, your own, your new sneaks, your labels, talking prices. It was like, hey man, check this. Cheapo, man, check this. So there we were, comparing prices. And Mike says, look. I looked, where? He pointed, there. I followed his finger. I shook my head, grinning. You believe it? He laughed. Him? Yeah, I believe it. We both laughed. It was Webb, and I mean the same old Webb. Same old supermarket sneakers, same prehistoric pants, probably from the great-grandfather of his. Same old scrawny Oatburger body, only the button changes. Today, it read smile. Uh-oh, I whispered. Here comes... Mike went instantly into his routine, meaning he acts like Webb is cool, or at least normal. He put on this huge grin and goes, Yo, Weberoni, what do you say, dude? He held up his hand. Webb high-fived it. Then they medium-fived and low-fived, behind the back-fived, between the legs-fived. Then Mike ran Webb through the handshake. They looped and looked and hooked and twirled every possible combination of the fingers. Must have taken five minutes. All this time, Mike kept his face straight and cool. So I did the same, which was killing me. I wanted to laugh so bad. Of course, Webb. He doesn't know cool from fool. So he was giggling away the whole time. Finally, Mike stepped back and looked Webb up and down and went, All right, spider, looking good. He rubbed the sleeve of Webb's prehistoric shirt between his thumb and forefinger. He nodded, all serious. Hey, good stuff. 
where'd you pick this up? Webb looked down at his own shirt, probably seeing, seeing it for the first time in his life. I don't know, he said. My mother usually buys my clothes. Maybe second time around, said Mike. Webb nodded. Maybe. Mike and I both exploded. We turned away and pretended we were having coughing fits. Second time around, see, is a thrift shop. In other words, used clothes. Me and Mike, we'd come to school in our underwear before we'd wear something from the second time around. We never turned back to Webb because our eyes landed on someone else. We looked at her, we looked at each other, and we both said the same thing. Who is that? Chapter 10. She was standing by herself. We moved a little closer to get a better look. Teacher, I said. Nah. Lost? She thinks this is the high school. Nah, she's got to be one of us. Which was hard to believe, but not impossible. Every once in a while, a girl will come back from summer vacation, and she's not just a little different, a little better. She's like, whoa. There's a girl in college now who is still a legend around here. On the first day of school, her homeroom teacher refused to believe she was who she said she was. She got sent to the principal's office. The, the principal, the secretary, the nurse, and the janitor, none of them believed her. She had no ID. She wasn't allowed into the class until her mother brought in her birth certificate to prove who she was. So we stood there, thinking of the girls from last year and trying to imagine how they would look the way they went. Whoa. Mike suggested, Andrea Tarpley? No way, I said. She didn't look anything like Andrea. He punched my arm. That's the point. If it is her, she wouldn't be looking like Andrea anymore. I studied her some more. Absolutely not. We went through other names. Rita Mazzelli, Julie Stein, Michelle Pratt. Hold it, I said. I made my hands like a telescope and peered through. It's Michelle. Mike made his own telescope. I don't think so. Look, she's all by herself. If it was Michelle, she'd be with her friends. Even they don't know it's her, I said. I'm going over. Going over? What are you going to do? I don't know. Say hello. I started over. Mike trailed, whispering. You ain't interested in girls yet. I just in I just got interested. She was standing sideways to me as I moved in. She kept staring straight ahead. She was beautiful. I came right up to her and made the first move of my life. I tapped her on the shoulder and said, Hello, Michelle. She turned. She smiled. She looked right at me. She was a goddess. She said, I'm not Michelle. She walked away. I stood there. Then I went after her. I tapped her again. You sure? She turned, smiled, the same smile, and said, I'm sure, and kept walking. The bell rang. The door opened. The cattle stampeded. Behind me, Mike was choking on laugh balls. I spent the rest of the day checking out the girl. So did hundred, so did a hundred other guys. She was right. It wasn't Michelle Pratt. Her name was Jane Forbes. She moved here from Wilmington. She's in seventh grade. I ate lunch with Mike. We spotted her in the salad line. She still seemed by herself. Think she'll go out for cheerleading, Mike asked me. In the morning, the principal had announced sign-ups for football and cheerleading and other stuff. If she don't go out, I said, they'll come after her. You're lucky, he said. You're a running back. I'm a grunt. She ain't going to notice me. Mike is a lineman. I'm a fullback. Well, he's buried in a pile of bodies. I'm crossing the goal line. Last year, they made me sit on the bench with the other sixth graders. This year, nothing is keeping me off the first string or out of the headlines. Better believe it, I said. She's going to go. I made my voice high like a girl's. Ooh, there's that Crash Coogan scoring another touchdown. I do believe I'm falling in love with that boy. He's so good and so handsome. Not like that ugly nipple nose Mike DeLuca. Mike took the banana from his tray and smacked me with it. I took the hot dog out of its roll and wiener whipped him. He grabbed at my hot dog and boinked me on the head. Around us kids were laughing. I brought my first, my fist down and mashed his hot dog roll. He karate chopped my roll. I turned his chocolate pudding upside down on his tray. He did the same thing to mine. By now the whole place was in an up uproar. Mike and I had started out laughing. We weren't anymore. There was no way I was going to stop. I've never been number two in my life. I can't stand to lose. More than that, I just won't. Like... One of my t-shirts says, refuse to lose. Problem was, DeLuca was like that too. I picked up a chunk of potato salad and flicked it in his face. He dipped his straw into the milk, capped it on the top of the straw with his finger, 
Pulled out the straw, reached it over my head, and released the finger. I got a milk shower. The place went bonkers. I blinked. I smiled. I nodded. I pulled my straw from my milk. I took a swig from the carton. I spit it into, the, into his face. Double bonkers. I scooped up some chocolate pudding with my spoon. I was cocking it back to flip it when I felt a hand squeeze my shoulder. Some dumb kid, I figured. So I dumped my load of pudding on the, on the hand. That's when I noticed it was an awful big for a kid's hand. I looked up. It was a teacher. Chapter 11. The vice principal smiled. That was a good sign. Don't even bother to sit, gentlemen, he said. You're not going to be here for that long. In fact, he leaned back in his swirl, swivel chair and clamped his hands behind his head. I don't even want to know why you're here. He looked at me. I'm not surprised you're the first one to show up this year, Coogan. I hear you're a loose cannon. He leaned forward. His hand smacked the desk. We flinched. He smiled. But hey, first day, right? So I'm cutting you some slack. I'm also reminding you I'm a big football fan. You guys look like you can kick some tail. So what I'm saying is, save it for the football field. His eyes went from me to Mike and back again. Okay? We nod. We nodded. Okay. He nodded. Okay. Get out of here. On our way out, he called, Gentlemen, we turned. Cross me, and I'll have your butts for breakfast. In the hallway, I gave Mike a forearm. Hey, man, hear that? I'm a loose cannon. After school, we met at my locker and headed for the gym. We picked up other football kids along the way. We were all itchy for action. We started thumping each other, juking, throwing body blocks, and then the quarterback, Brill, showed up with a football. And you know we had to get a scrimmage going right, right there in the hallway. Down to the water fountain and cut to science lab. Passes, tackles, pile-ups, even down the stairway. Others were heading for the gym. Hockey players, cheerleaders, even Webb. I nudged Mike. You believe it? He played midget football one year. Couldn't tell his chin strap from his jock strap. What's he think he's doing here? Mike grinned. Maybe he's going for fullback. Football, field hockey, cheerleading, everybody was milling around the gym, high-fiving, kicking the football. Mr. Tag Lieber, the athletic director, blew a whistle and yelled, All right, listen up. Football here, field hockey there, cheerleading there. Do it. Mike and I climbed into the bleachers with the rest of the footballers. The field hockey girls took the bleachers on the other side of the gym. At the end, under the scoreboard, were the cheerleaders. Mr. Latner, the head football coach, came up. Us footballers all jumped up and pumped our fists and went, woo, woo. The coach grinned and pumped us one back, and we went wild. Then he started talking to us, the usual stuff about parents' permission, the physical exams, and all. All of a sudden, DeLuca jabs me hard in, with his elbow. Hey, I growled. I was ready to crack him. Look, he whispered. His voice was straining, squeaky. He was pointing to the end of the gym, under the scoreboard. I looked. I figured I knew what he was talking about. Jane Forbes. Sure enough, there she was. A beauty among beauties. And then I knew she wasn't the one he was pointing to. After all, it was somebody who wasn't even pretty, but who stood out ten times more than the new girl from Wilmington. Penn Webb was out for cheerleading. Chapter 12. Abby was in the backyard, crawling, pushing a 12-inch ruler end over end ahead of her. What's she doing? said Mike. As we walked up the driveway, whatever it is, I said, it's a loony. I dropped my football laundry bag inside and headed straight for the phone. I dialed Pizza Mia, one pizza to go, large pepperoni, 438 Waverly Way. I hung up, 35 minutes. Mike groaned, we'll starve before it gets here. I opened the freezer. Think again, chief. I tossed him a half gallon of Sealtius Heavenly Hash. Then I got a jar of red cherries and some Cool Whip and chocolate syrup. We made Sundays in real Sunday dishes. Schultz says you stink, said Mike. Schultz ain't worth two snots, I said. Eric Schultz is a defensive back, eighth grader. Thinks he's tough. He thinks I'm supposed to be afraid of him just because I'm in seventh grade. Mike shoveled a glob of Cool Whip into his mouth. He says he can't wait for the first practice. He's going to send you home crying, he says. I smirked. Him? And who else? When I get done with him, he'll be running over to join Webb with the cheerleaders. I stood up. I batted my eyelashes and twirled around and made fists with my thumbs out. The girls do the way, the way girls do. Rah, rah, sis, boom. 
I jumped with the with both feet and threw back my arms. Bah! We laughed. You think he's serious, said Mike? Is he really going out? I shrugged. I don't know. I've seen that kid do some weird stuff. But is he allowed? I guess. There's boy cheerleaders in college. Yeah, he said. That's right. They're always picking up the girls and holding them up with one arm. We both pictured web, webbed one trying that. We cracked up again. Pizza came. It was gone in five minutes, as usual. We talked and talked about football mostly and about the new shopping mall that's coming. That's the end of chapter 12.